you have arrived at your destination. All right, everybody, welcome to the Sean vs. Wild podcast. I'm your host, as always, the man, the myth, the Sean Thriller Smith, the guy putting Rad back into talk radio. And today we're serving, we're serving up a piping hot cup of Joe. I've got Joe Brock back in the studio with me. I'm back. Joe, how's it going, man? Awesome. Just got off work. Yeah, how was your day today? It was good, but not as good as yours because you were off today. That's true. Today was my off day. You know what I did? That flex day. What'd you do? That flex day, dude. When you're me and you're you have my muscles, every day's flex day, dude. You yes. know what I did? I played some guitar, ran some errands, and I waited patiently for a package to come mm-hmm. from UPS. Mm. It arrived about two days late. Do I dare ask what was in? And this I'm going to have to send an email that says, "Hey, I specifically paid twenty five dollars to get second aid, but it's all right. It's mm. here now." Oh, I think I know what it is. Oh, I think you know what I it think is. I know exactly Listeners, what it is. Um, I enjoy my 90s culture, and uh, I've been watching a lot of American Gladiators lately. And uh, when I'm watching Gladiators, I couldn't help but notice some of the rad fashions of the day. <laughs> um, specifically, the footwear caught me off guard. Uh, or not off guard. I don't know. It piqued my interest. Yeah. Caught my eye. Tickled your fancy. Tickled my fancy. And uh, little Google rabbit hole going down did some searching and uh, turns out british knights still a company <laughs> guys so you can still get bks i always remember like on nickelodeon if you like did good and figure it out they're like okay and you want a pair of bk ratch techs so you always wore the british knight or you always uh, won british knights on nickelodeon shows that's badass yeah well anyway i went down a rabbit hole and uh turns out they still make them and uh they still look the exact same so uh, <laughs> for a great deal, I basically got two one hundred and twenty dollars pairs of shoes with second day air shipping, and I paid about ninety bucks total. And they are the raddest. I showed you when you came in here, but they are pretty much the raddest shoe ever. They're the the most badass shoes I've ever seen and in my life, Sean. Such nineties uh, colors. There's the purple, black, and orange, just like Phoenix Suns colors, mm-hmm. and then gray fuchsia. And neon green. Yeah, dude. Just the riffraff colors. Yeah. Super high tops. I can't wait to stomp around work in them tomorrow. Do you know which pair you're going to wear tomorrow? Oh, man. Just whatever one closely matches my the shirt that I wear. you got to match. Now I'm going to have to... Yeah, I'm going to have to start buying start fuchsia and lime your, green yeah, shirts. <laughs> dude. you got to start picking out your outfits before you go to work. Yeah, no. The man. night before, you know? Yeah, so uh, if I had a Phoenix Suns jersey, that would be... Uh, I don't know, ideal, or if I had anything that was fuchsia or lime green. I'm sure a quick Amazon rabbit hole search could, you know. I just feel like a black shirt will do. There's black on both. There you so go. we'll make there you it go. happen. We'll make it happen. And it's one of those things you probably don't even have to match, man. Not really. You, you want get, all your... Um, you get like a Charlotte Hornets windbreaker. <laughs> dude, perfect. <laughs> all your charisma is going to be in your footwear. Right. You know, I'm... Take a tally on how many compliments you get on your shoes tomorrow. Oh, I definitely will. Yeah. Next week's podcast, it'll just be... Uh, all the compliments that I got right. today. Yeah. But guys, we are here. We're not here to just talk about brand new British Knights shoes. Um, Joe and I invaded Louisville Supercon this past weekend. It was an invasion. Yes. And uh, so we are going to talk all about our Louisville Supercon experience. Uh, Joe, you've not been to a Comic-Con before. Never. Never been. It was awesome, though. Yeah, I was going to say, tell me some of your thoughts. What were some of your initial thoughts going into, going into Comic-Con? It. What did you think that you would see? I'll tell you, I think it was um, like the celebrities and things like that, looking up the, these lists of celebrities that'll be there. I didn't really know a lot of them. I knew, obviously, who like William Shatner was and like Alice Cooper and stuff like that. But like all the other ones, like I really didn't know who they were until you, you know, pretty much told me, but, um, I want to say my expectations were on a scale of one to 10, about a six and a half or a seven. Yeah. You're just going to roll in there and see what's up. Yeah. See what's up. I knew there'd be some booths. Um, and I guess I'll tell you what I, I was overwhelmed by and what I was most impressed by, which is the sheer, uh, mass quantity of people 
was a little overwhelming and awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, the size of the event I thought was insane because it was like literally one whole city block in a convention center and like every single room had people in it and every, you know, there was something different going on in every single room. And, uh, you know, I, when you think of Comic-Con, I guess you think of like comics typically. I didn't really know Supercon was uh, that much different. That to it was going to have wrestling and comics and video games. And all this stuff. Yeah. That kind of culture does go along with all the Comic-Con, but they had the wrestling. I had not seen wrestling done at right. a convention before like that. That was really cool. Yeah. Um, and like the wrestlers, you know, I didn't... I'm. Uh, What's his name? Larry Jerry Lawler. King. Jerry Lawler. <laughs> Larry yeah. the Cable Guy. I said Larry, I said Larry the King Lawler. <laughs> Larry the Cable Guy Lawler. <laughs> Jerry Lawler. Lawler the King. I knew who that was when I got there. I will rule you. <laughs> right. Um, now you know who Jimmy King is based off of, by right, the way. And yeah. Ready to rumble. No, yeah. So. I actually, well, I knew that already. Okay. Perfect. But, um, so I knew who that was. Um, I didn't know that that was his name, but I knew who it was. Yeah, if, Kane was if, there. If that makes sense. Yeah, Kane was there. Sergeant Slaughter. Sergeant Slaughter. I knew who Sergeant Slaughter was. Um, but some of the other wrestlers, I didn't really... I wasn't like... Super, Booker T. Booker T. Scott Steiner, Big yeah. Papa Pump, was there. I don't know if I know who that is. Oh, dude, he's a genetic freak. Is he? Oh, yeah. wait, who was the other guy? The tall, the super tall guy, Jones? What's oh, yeah. I don't know. Nathan Jones? Nathan Jones? I wasn't familiar with him, but that was like the, one of the biggest dudes ever. Yeah, that guy was gigantic. Just to put this into perspective, guys, there was some dude there in an elaborate wolf costume, and the guy was wearing stilts, and he was roughly the same height <laughs> as Nathan Jones. Yeah, that guy was a monster. Dude, what did you think of the costumes there? They were great. Some of them were better than others, but... A lot of them were awesome. I just love the spirit of like everybody, everybody yeah, getting right. together, putting a little effort in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's cool for sure. It was really, really cool. I'm not a costumer though. I'm yet. down to become one because I'm not either. Like even on Halloween, I really do very minimalistic Halloween costume work. Right. I'm just kind of cheap and lazy and just like usually there just to drink the beers, you know, and right, don't really yeah. care too much. But after seeing that. This costume is just a formality that keeps. Right. <laughs> After seeing all that, you know, I'm definitely, definitely down to, to get more into it. I thought it was really cool. Yeah, exactly. We won't look at it as just a formality that uh, keeps us uh, from drinking beers. Right. And or we'll, allows us to drink beers, depending. And the, when I was a kid, I would always go as uh, Scorpion or Sub-Zero from Mortal Kombat. And I feel like, you know, maybe I can dust off those costumes. Dude, dust off the, the old stews, yeah, dude. dude. From when I was six years old, trying to stretch back into those. <laughs> Just make it work. Just know? make it work, man. Yeah, Scorpion, Sub Zero. I was gonna ask you what what potential costumes do you think that you would? Uh, One of those, for sure. I would make a pretty good Raiden, probably. You would, dude. We just get you like a a hat, just a hat. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Basically, dead giveaway. A dead giveaway. Yeah, I was gonna say like some sort of just bowl. Yeah, he, <laughs> like, just like, yeah. Just uh, put a just walk. make it out of cardboard and tin foil. <laughs> yeah, a walk. Yeah, yeah just put like a that. lampshade on your head. Right. Perfect, yeah. dude. You're just you look just like Lord Raiden. Yep. <laughs> we need to yeah, we need to get costumes, but we need to be like be kind rewind and get just like the most like j- j- jank ass yeah, fucking <laughs> costumes ever. Yeah. I'm wearing a lampshade. Right. You'll just be wearing a blue sheet. <laughs> right. <yeah. laughs> Perfect. Who did you like better, Scorpion or Sub Zero as a kid? Squ- uh, Scorpion. Mm. Yeah. I was always a Sub Zero fan. See, I liked them both, to be honest. I like the ninjas in general. But um I just dude, I just love the you know, the snakes slash scorpion thing that he shoots out of his the harpoon, man. Yeah, whatever, like, in my mind as a kid, I just remember the scene of him in the woods and just shooting that thing out of his fucking arm and, or his hand, whatever. Get over here. And it was just badass. Yeah, dude. It was so tight. Scorpion is a beloved character. Yeah. I didn't, I never, uh, see, I grew up in Mortal Kombat 1 territory. Who's he fighting in that scene? Reptile? Johnny Cage. Oh, is it? Yeah, he fights Johnny Cage in the movie. In the movie. Yeah. Yeah, okay. But see, in the video game, part one, uh, it's a harpoon. He throws it. Doesn't come out of his hand. Like it's just a. It's a harpoons are what you know people use to kill whales and right. stuff. Yeah. So <laughs> like it's basically just that. And uh, but no, somehow in the movie it starts coming out of his hand. And uh, that's yeah. pretty. That's pretty awesome. For pretty some good reason, upgrade. Like I thought he was fighting one of the other. One of the other ones. Scorpion and Sub Zero do fight each other uh, in different scenes. They do. Yeah. Okay. Just making sure I'm not going crazy. Just making sure, dude. I wasn't on acid when I saw Mortal Kombat One. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> you can never be too. In careful. 1996, for the first time, <laughs> <on> acid. <laughs> It was my first time. What, seeing Mortal Kombat? No, doing acid. <laughs> all the big acid companies, man. Dude, all the big the big acid. <laughs> Forget the big apple. Send me to the big acid. Uh. Um <laughs> But yeah, uh I'm glad that you enjoyed it. Uh I I thought it was kind of a I don't know, it was fifty fifty. 
I, f- I felt like uh, it was 50-50 going whether or not you would enjoy it as much as me. And I think it just, you knocked it out of the park. Yeah, I had an awesome time. And thanks for taking me. Hey, you're welcome, bud. I can't wait to go back. I think next time that we go... We should definitely tailgate it. Yeah, oh yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, well, the conditions were sloppy, yeah, um, to say the least. Sloppy Joe. Yeah, the condition, weather conditions were a little fucking sloppy, so we couldn't bust out the Ranger. We couldn't get our crock pots fired up. Couldn't get the grill going. Couldn't yeah. get the cooler out. You know what I mean? And just, the best part it's is too wet. This, there's not even really a place to park. There's not. We would have been <laughs> holding up traffic, fucking <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> trying to tailgate. We'll just tailgate a parking garage. Yeah, but blocks away, and no I, one sees us. <laughs> No one even knew we the were there. The cops just come and be like, y'all gotta get the fuck out of like, here. Dude, all this smoke on that charcoal grill, like somebody's gonna pass out You're around right. here, dude. Yeah. All the fumes. All right. <laughs> so it's not, this is not a ventilated area. No, we're indoors right now. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, dude, but I do think we should both be uh, wizards. Oh, yeah. I'm get down. some large, long beards. Mm hmm. And uh, get some beakers. Get some be- beakers. We're gonna make potions. <laughs> we're gonna make potions. And we're gonna and wings, so we can be the Lord of the Wings. Yes, that's a genius idea. Perfect. It really is. So get your tailgating ready, guys. Mm-hmm. Think uh, if you have a good uh, idea for a Comic Con themed tailgate food, we've given you Lord of the Wings. It's up to you to come up with some other ones. Hit us with your best one right. on Facebook. Yeah, and we got beverages covered because we're just going to put shit in beakers and drink out of those. Yeah, they're going to be potions. <laughs> so, per usual, we're going to be doing alchemy right? <laughs> in our, during our tailgating. It's going to be like blended up tums and <laughs> yeah. a couple ibuprofen. <laughs> yeah, it's just a beer with, Orange a, juice. with some Pepto in it right. or like some a champagne. Alka-Seltzer in it to, yeah. for fizz. <laughs> Just for a little fizz. Just for a little fizz. I just want to give a shout out too, by the way, uh, to everyone that responded that they were still listening last week. Last week was a little off the rails, and we're destined to keep it on track this week. Right. And this is the first time I, I think, even wrote some stuff down. Like, this isn't a part two of the last one. This is just a completely different thing. Yeah, this <laughs> is specifically about our Comic Con. Our Comic Con. Our Comic Con. Uh, baby. 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 I, here I am at Comic Con, and I was just thinking about you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I saw them dragons on that coaster. You know? <laughs> <laughs> baby, baby, I, here I am walking around comic and, and I saw some dragons on a coaster and I thought this would be great for our living room, baby. I'm coming home to you with these dragon coasters uh, from comic They were $7 a piece. I got two of them anyway, baby. <laughs> I got two of them. Money, money's no object for us, baby. Spare no expense here at the comic and baby. I got two dragon coasters. <laughs> and uh, guys, just for someone uh, that has no idea, which is basically everyone. That wasn't at Comic Con. Comic Con. Comic Con to hear us say that. Uh, Joe did, you know, Joe's girlfriend uh, at first dropped us off. And a uh, big shout out to Rain. Thanks for dropping us off. Uh, she did drop us off, and she really didn't have much, uh, I don't know, much intention of uh, going to Comic Con, I think. Comic Con, right. Super Con. Mm-hmm. And, um, but that all changed when uh, Joe got her a nice souvenir. And what, it, what, what did you get? You got coasters. Coasters. It was a uh, you know something from uh, what's that show called? You got that House Targaryen. The House Targaryen. And then you got the Mortal Kombat. I almost dragon. said Lord of the Rings, but that, that's not it. <laughs> Game, of Game of Thrones. Same thing. Same thing. And almost... I, I don't know shit about Game of Thrones. You don't. I don't know. Any... You're the last one, dude. All right. Yeah. I mean. I mean. I know you know. Just wait for the show to wrap. Have you seen it's it? Almost... Have you watched it? Yeah. All? I'm, have you... I'm caught up. Have you... Okay. So is it as good as everybody says it is? Yeah, it's pretty good, man. But I mean, you don't. You can be honest. I I think it's pretty good, but also unlike other people uh, that that watch the show, I I don't usually. I'm not current on it. Right. Usually, I happen to be caught up, but um, like I watched the first season mm-hmm. um, when it was on TV. Me and my sister used to watch it, and uh, sometimes I would skip a week and I'd have to TiVo, you know, or have to watch some of the TiVoed ones over right. at her house, and we'd have like a few episodes to get into. Um, but then I watched like I rewatched season one and two, and then I watched like after a few years, I watched like three, four, and five, and then after a few years, I like watched the rest of them. Gotcha. So I, I don't have to watch them necessarily when they premiere. Now this is the last season; only a few episodes left. I might have to pick up HBO Go or HBO Now or whatever and stay just current. Stay current. Yeah. Look at us; we're just two nerds. I mean, it's a hot topic. You yeah, know? that's is. true. And you want to know what all the fuss is about? Game of like, no, I don't watch Game of Thrones. That's not because I have anything against Game of Thrones. It's just that, you know a lot of times I don't have that much time on my hands to begin with. Um, yeah, I've made the, a so. comment about this on the podcast many times, but it's like if a new show comes on, like. Literally the weekend, so like Haunting of Hill House, 
Mm-hmm. You know, everybody at work and everybody I know is like, man, have you seen that show? And like, I came out on a Friday and then like Monday, people are like, man, I watched all, the whole thing. You seen it yet? I'm like, no, I, I don't have that kind of time. Right. It's Saturday and Sunday, dude. I got shit. I got to be I have 48 hours right. and I can't spend 14 of them on a show. Right. Right. So, I mean, I'm not trying to say I'm too important, but I mean, it just is what it is. I just don't have that kind of spare time. I don't either. When you're running a podcast like this and right. you're producing a podcast like you do. Right, man. Heck. You're lining up guests, getting out there, hitting the streets. Hitting the streets. Getting interviews. That's what it's all about. That's what it is all about. And believe it or not, guys, like I said, we are going to be covering all things Louisville Supercon. We had an awesome time. We did. So big shout out to everybody that puts on Supercon because Mm -hmm. this is like, honestly, I've been to a few uh, comic conventions and other type of conventions and stuff. And this one uh, was great. Now I got to give a big shout out to it, man. I had a lot of fun and I'm glad that was the first one. Hopefully they just keep getting better, you know? Hopefully, yeah. So, but yeah, weather conditions, not ideal nope. for uh, tailgating. tailgating. Yep. It was rainy, mm-hmm. but we did go in. We got our bracelets, our super con bracelets. Do you still, have yours on? I still got mine on. Oh, I cut mine off, man. I liked it so much. I figured I'd keep it. Just keep it forever. It's a really high quality bracelet. I mean, yeah. For $35, you know, it, <laughs> a ticket for one day, they better give you a nice bracelet. I mean, it's like cool bracelet. Get, get the ticket to the show free. Here's the deal. I'm going to keep this on till next year mm. and just hope to God that they got the same ones. On. <laughs> same color. Same, same color. Day. Like, same man, we didn't sell all the all the old ones. We got to, let's just use what we have first. Right. I mean, that would be a smart thing to yeah, do. Yeah, dude, you have 365 days. Right. Of course, next year. Uh, Is there another one? I saw, like, they do it in other cities. It's not just Louisville, right? Uh, I'm not sure with Supercon. I, I, I would s- imagine. I saw one online because i looked up like i wanted to look up videos of it to see if anybody had any footage from the louisville one and i saw one that said like raleigh or charlotte or something Mm -hmm. like that so and for for some reason i was thinking that it was like a louisville specific thing but well i think supercon is a thing and then um every city kind of puts one on has like a local team that puts it on Mm -hmm. it's not like a traveling circus type thing gotcha but you know what i don't know for all I know, we could be fucking completely wrong. I could be completely wrong. All I did was show up as a fan, and I left as a fan. Yeah, it was I showed great. up as somewhat of a fan and left a huge one. Yeah. So, so you're going to be a total nerd before this is all over with. I am. We're going to be into the nerd culture. We are. But talking about the celebrities, you mentioned earlier, we mm-hmm. talked about some of the wrestlers that were there, but uh, there were plenty of celebrities there, guys. There were. Uh, Jerry Lawler, Booker T., Kane, Mark Henry, Daniel Son. <laughs> but yes, <laughs> that's name? the wrestlers. But yeah, Ralph Macchio from Karate Kid, <laughs> right. William Zabka, uh, Johnny, and uh, Martin Cove. So if you haven't seen Cobra Kai yet or you haven't watched the original Karate Kid trilogy in a while, uh, yeah, all my favorites were there. And I'm, I was a huge Karate Kid fan growing up. The first one I can quote. So it's such a quotable movie for me. I've seen it a hundred times or. A thousand times, maybe, for real. <laughs> I actually just watched it uh, probably a month ago. Really? Um, I love the original Karate Kid. So that was so awesome getting to meet uh, Ralph Macchio. I wish that I could have gotten them all to sign it, but just the money. I didn't have all of that much money. Right, yeah. So for like, I think it's like $50 a, a signature and picture and stuff. I just, I had to go, I had to go with Daniel son. Right, yeah, you so. got to. I like the picture you chose, though. It was from The Outsiders, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, see, I went against the grain here. <clears throat> you did. When I met Sean Young, you know, everybody got her pictures from Blade Runner, and Blade Runner had just come out. It was super hot. And uh, I'm a big Dune fan, as you guys have heard me, I don't know, talk about and bitch about um, <laughs> through, over the years. So there was a picture of her from Dune. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to get her picture from Dune and get her to sign it and uh, let her know that I'm a, I'm a real fan. Right, and yeah. same with Ralph Macchio. Everybody had the Karate Kid stuff. And I knew I was only going to get his. I knew I could only afford to get his. So I, I went with something a little bit different. Also very important to me growing up picture of him from the outsiders mm-hmm. and he signed it sean stay gold ralph macchio nice it was it dude it's a pretty sharp pick it is and i might have good in gold uh, sharpie yeah i think i'm just gonna spread out all my uh all my gains uh take a pick you know just take a photo make that the cover photo this week oh well, yes so oh i meant to say this shout out to everybody that actually did i did i already say that shout out to anybody that uh messaged us and said hey i was still listening yeah you did. yeah well big shout out to you guys again right and let us know uh what comic-con themed uh stuff you want to tailgate with and also tell me what celebrity you want to get uh, an autograph from 
because I got Ralph Macchio's. I also got Alice Cooper. Alice Cooper. He was there. My boy. A Coops. <laughs> a Coops, dude. AC in the house, dude. What a great guy. He was really funny. He was a super cool guy. Yeah. And uh, listeners, I will have you know that uh, I've never met Alice Cooper before, and I've been an Alice Cooper fan since um, 1991, 92, when Wayne's World came out, when I first saw it, <laughs> when it was available for rent. Uh, that's the first time I'd ever heard Alice Cooper or heard of him. And uh, for some reason, I've been an, like just obsessed with Wayne's World also. And I've seen that movie a whole bunch. And I didn't know what to say. What do you say to somebody that you've been an uber fan of without sounding like a total dork, you know? You quote Wayne's World with him. It's exactly what I did. <laughs> that's exactly what I did. Listeners, uh, Alice Cooper still knows a majority of the dialogue from Wayne's World, I will have you know. And we quoted it back and forth to each other. That's an amazing thing. I know. That's I awesome. feel like that's just like something to check off the bucket list. Oh, yeah, it is. And uh, I got a great photo of him, too, with like the Dracula cape and the <laughs> yeah. Muppet band in the background. <laughs> um, but yeah, we quoted some, uh, some Wayne's World. He's like, Millie Wauke, which is Algonquin for the good land. <laughs> and uh, we listened to his Q&A, man. He was really interesting. He, he was. Super funny. Super, super funny. Which of his stories was your favorite one? Um... Probably the Elvis story where he where he talks about meeting Elvis and he goes up the elevator. I can't remember who he said he was with in the elevator. Do you remember? He was like Chubby Checker, Linda Loveless, who was a star of uh, Deep Throat, a very famous adult film at the mm. time. And um, uh, I can't remember who else he said he was with. It but was like, um, shit, who was it, dude? It was a musician. Yeah. Chubby Checker, Linda Loveless, and somebody else uh, he goes up there with. And uh, Elvis, the first thing Elvis does, like, hey, man. You like guns? Or whatever he said. Or yeah. Like, he he like, brings him into the kitchen, puts a loaded weapon in his hand, and is like, hey, man, point that at me. I'm going to show you how to take a gun out of a man's I'm going to show you how to disarm a man. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to show you how to disarm a man. And he's talking, Alice Cooper's talking about how, like, his natural instinct is just pull the trigger and kill him. <laughs> yeah, he's like, just shoot him. But uh, he was like, literally, the moment that I had it in my hand, the, I, I was, like, flipped onto the floor with a foot Boot on my, my neck. neck. <laughs> yeah. And he had disarmed him. Yeah. And then he was like, hey, hey brother, you want to see my most prized possession? And then he took him into the bedroom, and he was, like, getting all weird about it. And he opened up an envelope, and it was just filled with the x-rays of bones that he had broken when he got into a fight with some, some people. Like, days before. Yeah, days before. So, within a matter of, like, 72 hours or so, these x-rays of these broken bones of these individuals that he had beat up had become his prized possession. Yeah. 72 hours later, man. Oh, that's so funny. Could you imagine... You know, just to think about that story, like, you know, Alice Cooper did mention that Elvis was a black belt, and I knew that he was a black belt. Um, you know, I thought that was, like, something, like, you know, karate is, like, something to be used. Like, you know, I'm sure, I always just figured, like, Elvis did it in a dojo, and they gave him, like, a black belt. Right. Because he's Elvis. Yeah. But uh, apparently he was an ass kicker. Could you imagine getting your ass kicked by Elvis? I'd be honored, dude, to get my ass kicked <laughs> by Elvis. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, I like to believe that there's people alive today, like one of those dudes with, with the broken collarbone walking yeah. around. It's like, dude, one time Elvis beat the fuck out of me and broke my collarbone. Dude, <laughs> I got beat up by Elvis. He broke my collarbone. Now every time it rains and it gets cold, dude, my shoulder hurts. Right, just reminds me for of like days. Elvis, right. And I just remember the time the, the king kicked my dick in the dirt, bro. <laughs> But yeah, I love I love the Elvis story. Alice Cooper was great. He was. Guys, if you haven't seen Alice Cooper live, I can't uh, recommend it enough. Definitely go to one of the certs concerts, and if you get the chance to, I don't know, just look up an interview with him. He's great. He's funny. He get his autograph. If super you can. funny. Next Supercon that he's at, go and get his autograph. And also, I some other wish fulfillment. Man, I had a huge crush on this girl named Joey Lauren Adams. Mm -hmm. And uh, guys, you remember her from Mall Rats and Chasing Amy and Biodome, Bio the first movie I ever remember seeing her in. Big Daddy and Big Daddy, of course, <laughs> and a lot of other uh, movies. But Biodome specifically, I remember uh, as a kid, just like having this huge, huge crush on her. Yeah, and uh, I think the only the. I recognized her most. I'd seen Biodome before, but I was really young when I when I watched that, um, which probably shouldn't have watched it when I was that young. But whatever, um, was Big Daddy? Yeah, because I remember when Big Daddy came out, and I used to actually really like that movie. <laughs> yeah, well, she just got that. she just had like this unique voice and something mm -hmm. about her. I just had a huge crush on her when I was a kid, and I met her and I got her autograph, and I may have told her that I was like, hey. I got this picture, and I got her to autograph a picture from Biodome, because right. I was like, you know what? This is just the moment I fell in love with you. <laughs> and she was really cool. 
She was so big cool. shout out to Joey Lauren. She, she, hey, dude. Adams. We did give her a I went business to card. Uh, we did go. We, yeah, we got her business card. <laughs> Asked her if she does podcast. She said she had to listen to make sure this podcast wasn't hot, hot, hot garbage. garbage. <laughs> which I don't blame her, man. Never too uh, better to be safe than sorry in this podcast world. Right. So she's gonna big shout out, Miss Adams for listening a couple things Ms. Joe Adams if you listen to this one I was the dude standing next to Sean talking to you yeah um, and I didn't say much I just kind of stared at you for I don't know three minutes yeah <laughs> and then high five you at the end probably right yes uh, fun little fact uh, I went to school with a Joe Adams and he works with us now really and her name is Joey Adams and his name was Joey Adams interesting yeah hmm, hmm. so uh, Joe Adams from work. Don't think I'm talking about how hot you are, bro. Because <laughs> it's not a thing. Because you're definitely listening to this, and that's definitely the message you're getting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't get any wild ideas. Uh, but yeah, Ralph Macchio, Alice Cooper, Joey Lauren Adams. Of course, I met Jerry the King Lawler. Jerry the King Lawler. Jerry the King Lawler, I told him uh, this great idea, because I mentioned it on the podcast a couple weeks ago when I was doing my wrestling stuff. The guy's an accomplished artist. I couldn't believe some of the artwork he was showing us there on this like it was pretty amazing yeah on his phone he had done some like commissions for a comic book cover that was wonder woman and uh it looked just like uh wonder woman gal <laughs> gal Gadot. i don't know is do you pronounce the t in her last name or is it Godot? dude i have no idea hard to tell <clears throat> gal tell Gadot. Him. but who knows it was a great drawing though. yeah knocked it out of the park i was like man you should do a youtube channel with your artwork and he's like how do you get a youtube channel yeah he's like youtube how did you even get a YouTube? I was, I was like, brother, you all you got to do is sign up. You Anyone got an email can have one. address? Yeah. You're fucking good to go, dude. <laughs> so, King, do us a favor. Do the world a favor. Show everybody how awesome of an artist you are on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Make it happen. And if he does start a YouTube art channel, I'm going to just take the... the I'm going to take all the praise for that for right. the rest of my life. And then he can we can do a collab and he can get on our YouTube channel. Yeah, that's true. He can get on our YouTube channel. And everybody's like, I didn't know they had a YouTube channel, and that's because we don't. Yet. Yet. <laughs> but we've made it a point. I think we've kind of made our minds up that we're going to be at the Supercon next year. Yep. Uh, as uh, not, not just guests. Our artwork will be speaking for us. Oh, yes, it will. We'll be doing meets. We'll be doing greets. And autographs and whatever you want, pictures. Yeah, whatever you want, dude. You can buy our 8x10s. Autographs will be $50 a piece. A piece, yeah. But you can get an 8x10. One, you can either get one that, of me or one of Joe or one of us together. Right. My autograph is 50. Joe's also 50. <laughs> but unlike the Karate Kid cast, we will cut you a deal. Right. You can uh, get both. If you get the picture with me and Sean both on it, we'll... 80 bucks, we'll sign it, and yeah. we'll split it for you. 90, $95. We'll split it for $47.50. Uh, I couldn't believe... The big thing for me with the celebrities... Oh, for one, I got to give a big shout out because the Fonz was there. Oh, yeah. Forgot about him. I knew we were forgetting somebody. He was wearing purple... We're forgetting a lot, but... Purple crushed velvet pants, which I loved. Yeah. I was really into that. You know, another thing we forgot to mention is uh, Sergeant Slaughter. Oh my gosh! But his outfit <laughs> yeah. and how he looked exactly like his banner picture that was hanging behind him. <laughs> yeah, that was so great. Uh, so you know, he looks the exact same. He looks the yeah. Honestly, Sergeant Slaughter looked the exact same, and there was a big picture of him hanging up, and he was wearing like the exact same outfit, and yeah. he literally it literally just looked like two. It looks like someone just took a picture one second beforehand, and right. that was what was on the banner. Like that morning, they decided that his background picture was going to be him sitting at that table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically, but it uh, wasn't. Dude, it was great, though, man. A lot of cool celebrities uh, there. My big thing that uh, I couldn't believe was just how uh, immensely popular the Overwatch voice actors were. Right. Yeah, that was very strange. Dozens of people. I mean, that's a huge game. I know it's like a really, really big game. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't surprise me that much. But I just don't... I didn't know people got that excited over voice actors. Yeah. Not to take anything away from what they do. I just didn't know people cared that much. Well, and I thought, too, like, maybe for sure... Well, you know, and of course he had a huge line, but they had, like, Kevin Conroy, who does Batman... Um, from Batman the Animated Series, but mm -hmm. he's he's been the voice of Batman since the early 90s. He's right. like the Arkham Asylum voice and the video game stuff, you know, all that sort of thing. So he was there, and I knew that was going to be a big deal. And Robin, and he was there too. Well, uh, isn't like the girl, isn't it a girl that does Mickey Mouse's voice now? Uh, maybe. I think now. that it is. And she was there. I'm pretty sure it's a she. But like, I didn't see one person at her booth all day. <laughs> so Mickey like, Mouse, you said? I'm pretty, yeah, no, I'm like 99% sure. Hmm, I don't know. Maybe the LSD had kicked in for Maybe, me at that dude. point. Big acid, dude. <laughs> dude. 
What if someone tripped at Comic Con? I don't know, man. That'd be a terrible idea. Yeah, I feel like it'd be the worst place. Just I've never taken drugs. I've n- I've never I've either. never taken acid. Yeah. So I don't know what that's like, but I imagine that that would be the worst place to do it. That I mean, just really probably any place is probably a terrible idea. <laughs> but that would be a very extreme. The, the Kentucky International Convention Center. Yeah, the very extreme atmosphere to to take acid in. I would imagine. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, wouldn't, wouldn't recommend it. Yeah, definitely would not, guys. Um, but uh, <laughs> the big acid companies. <laughs> but yeah, we saw a bunch of a big shout out to Stephen Bowman, man, a local uh, artist here, good friend of mine on the show. He actually drew that picture of Ric Flair wearing the Infinity Gauntlet that mm-hmm. that hangs in, proudly in the Smithsonian. Yep, he was there. He and, was. Uh, his his artwork's awesome, dude. Don't you just wish you could draw? I wish like I could that? draw at all yeah i mean i can kind of i was dude it's weird because we just need discipline bro right like when i was in like the sixth and seventh grade i won an art competition oh really for something that i had drawn uh or not drawn painted rather well drew it i guess and then painted it right and i got first place and this, what was it of it was like a still life of like this vase um with flowers in it and then it had like just assorted fruits around the bottom of uh-huh. it right so it was is just that some was, basic does, does your mom have that framed yeah it's hanging, hanging up? Okay. right yeah so i painted that in like seventh grade and i'm like i look at it sometimes when i go over there and i'm like dude that don't look that bad yeah. that actually looks pretty decent check out those assorted fruits <laughs> right now like there was shading and shit and i'm like who taught me how to do, like how, i'm sh- i remember the art teacher was very helpful and like she would show me how to do things you know what i mean but i did it you know i'd say about 95 percent of it on my own yeah and I was a kid. I think I was in like sixth grade or something. I don't know. I did it but all on my own. My no own, help from dude. anybody. Nobody, You're dude. the Kenny Powers of I'm the a seventh grade art Independent world. sixth grader <laughs> painting assorted fruits and flowers and vases. Check out those assorted fruits. Yeah. Yeah. But you were definitely the Kenny Powers of. What I was trying to say now is that like I can't. I don't think I can fucking paint for shit. I couldn't do it with my life depending on it. I can draw some shit with chalk. <laughs> I got a three year old. We draw with chalk sometimes. And uh, I make a mean bat and flowers and yeah, other dude. random shit but i mean you know she's three so she can draw like circles and stuff and you know probably better than i can to be honest the brock artistry runs deep in the yeah. bloodline oh yeah dude very much so i was gonna try to play this off all cool um and we're gonna edit it to make it sound seamless but i literally almost died he did just now choked <laughs> on my diet coke yeah you might have heard a few coughs <laughs> but don't worry i paused it hacked my lungs up and i'm barely Functioning, I'm barely surviving. I was like, man, I gotta catch my breath. I'm barely surviving. Dude's out of breath just by drinking Coke. Just diet Coke, <laughs> just fucking. Dude, there's not even any calories in it, bro. Right. What are you doing? No calories. No um, alcohol. I almost <laughs> didn't live to see the next Supercon. Right, dude. Heck, knock on wood. Short-lived. But uh, yeah, dude. Well, you should get back into it, man. Maybe you I know. Will. I started drawing a couple months ago, mm-hmm. and they're not very good, but it's a start. That's fine. And I think. My interest from going to these comic conventions, my interest in comics over the last couple of years have really um, has just really expanded. I went from like not reading comic books ever and just kind of like being on like the far fringes mm-hmm. of like the culture. Like I was like, hey, I like Lost <laughs> and right. I like wrestling <laughs> and, you know, whatever. Now I actually read a lot of comics and uh, my appreciation when I read them for the artwork has kind of inspired me to try to try to do something right. i feel like when you just focus on it when you can see it you know it's kind of like being a musician like if you actually listen to music you're like oh, okay now i can kind of get how it's constructed right yeah for sure um it's definitely not easy by any means uh, no people make it look way easier than it really is um and even something just like drawing something simple is fucking hard just like literally the outline of something is is hard for me sometimes yeah so we don't. We lack the discipline, but that doesn't mean that we're not going to get better. We're going to work harder at it every single day. Mm-hmm. And I'm always picking up new hobbies and shit, and just trying to have some good, clean fun. Yeah. Speaking of good, clean fun, what do you think was behind that curtain at the Geek Goddess booth? I mean, that is some good, clean fun there. So it said 18 and up, you know. So probably <laughs> they, would, they like said a, 18 and up. We'll check IDs. It's probably like cigarettes or something. <laughs> I would imagine. Yeah, they're selling back there. I'm uh, <laughs> I was confused. Okay, I I get it that there is definitely a niche for uh, cosplay, artistic nudes. Yeah, I guess just adult entertainment. Um, but man, right in the smack dab Dead middle, smack middle, six year olds walking by, 
and it's just like come on in y'all yeah and i mean but whatever That's no they cool. did have a shower curtain up so right. in so all you fairness couldn't see. you couldn't go in there but i will say like they had the books out that were like you could flip through the pages some and, risky photos and they were scantily clad <laughs> yeah right. in pretty risky positions mm-hmm. provocative pre- pre- uh, positions provisions i don't know what i was gonna say don't worry about it. provocative positions <laughs> and i was like man i'm glad a youngster didn't pop right. by yeah seriously. and i'm glad i popped by <laughs> so it was a win-win it was a win-win so i want to give a big shout out to the geek goddesses i'm sure you're probably tuning in man you saw SuperCon. you saw a whole podcast talking about it right we'll put your name in the notes yep check out our review we'll tag them our tag- review Hey, keep doing what you're doing. We appreciate uh, anybody that's an entrepreneur. Yeah. But I will say we <laughs> talked and joked about going behind the curtain, and unfortunately, we never did. Yeah. We just didn't, you know, people might get the wrong idea. We it got an image to uphold. That's true. And we're running a successful podcast. That's true. We don't want people snapping pics. Like, we got to remain. We're end up on the fucking internet. Like, it's going to TMZ. Sh- be like, right, yeah. <laughs> Joe, here's a Joe podcast. Brock leaving a, a shower curtain in the middle of Comic Con. Right. We all know what that means. Yeah. So we don't want that. So, but yeah, I wonder what was going on back there. Yeah, it probably was just uh, cigarettes and mm-hmm. voting. Right, yeah, voting. <laughs> it's just a voting booth. Right. <laughs> what if that's what it was? We well, got like, 18 to vote, so we don't know what was back there, you know? That's true. Those photos could have just been to lure people in. Yeah, they're like, hey, we, get we in need there, you to and vote. And it's like, you know. Your opinion matters. Right. Please vote. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we don't know. We don't know what it is. But hard telling. We're going to be the next uh, geek gods, that's for sure, once we start cosplaying. That's 100% true. We need to start getting in better shape, though, because, <laughs> you know, I don't want to go off on this tangent. You know, I know a lot of times people say that, uh, you know, a lot of times women think that there's like a beauty standard, especially like in comic books, like you have to look... Right. Um, totally unnatural yeah guess what for men you have to look completely unnatural as well right yeah. so we're gonna have to start hitting the gym we're gonna have to do the sit-ups we're gonna have to get some airbrushed 12 packs yeah, yeah. well i'm gonna i'm hoping by next year i'll have my own 12 pack <laughs> right of diet coke oh, right right yeah. there beside me when i sign autographs because it'll be hot because i'll still be fat <laughs> i'll be sweating <laughs> It'll be hot because we'll be outside in the parking lot tailgating. Yeah, because we will tailgate it all morning. Right. Well, it will be the middle of, well, not the middle of, but the beginning of December. Yeah, Or around maybe. the end of November. So hopefully we'll catch a break. We're just going to rock and roll all night, party every day, and tailgate every morning yeah. before Comic-Con. Mm-hmm. We need, to, we need to just take that on the road. Yeah, just start following it around. The Lord of the Wings. Yeah, dude. We need to set up our own snack shack. Yeah, dude. And like uh, chicks would follow around Aria Speedwagon back in the day. <laughs> right, yeah. That's us with Comic-Con. Yeah, dude. That's Comic-Con. us with Comic-Con, dude. Yeah. <laughs> just following around the Greek goddesses. <laughs> the Greek <laughs> the Greek goddesses, the fucking yes. Fucking geek goddesses. <laughs> I think Wonder Woman's a Greek goddess, is she not? Or no, she's Amazonian. Don't look at me, man. I don't know. That's true. You're just now learning. I do. I don't care where the fuck she's from, brother. I don't care where she's from, dude. She's wonderful, and she does a lot of great things for women. <laughs> and that's all that matters. That's all they need. Yeah. Who's your favorite superhero, Joe? Superhero? Yeah. Or comic book <laughs> thing. What's your, I what's mean, your geek thing? Yeah. It would be my favorite, just because that's the one I'm most familiar with, and that's the one I like. But, but I do like Iron Man. Only because the first Iron Man movie was so badass. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, that's about as far as it goes for dude, me. Dude, that first one is awesome. It is. All dude. the other ones. D- to be honest, I think I watched the second one. Didn't really pay a whole lot of attention because probably just wasn't interested. Mm-hmm. But it, I still don't care because the first one was that good. Yeah. I think Iron Man 1 for a long time was like... I mean, to me, Iron Man 1 is still the best Marvel movie. Yeah, I'll agree. And uh, I know that's pretty bold, man. Everybody's talking about the Avengers stuff. They mm-hmm. talk about Thor Ragnarok and Black Panther. But to me, Iron Man 1 still the best. Right. Um, and it, now, I say that like with the movies and stuff, but you know, I watched like all of The Punisher. I watched all of Daredevil. I watched all of on Netflix. Luke Cage. I watched all right, Jessica Jones. They recently Jones. all got canceled. Did you know that? Did they really? Yeah. Did I watch every single one of them? I've seen every episode of all the Marvel series on Netflix, and they're all f- super good. I'm sure they'll... Uh, get their own show. I bet they're probably just being canceled off of Netflix because they're mm-hmm. originals. Disney owns the Marvel properties now. I'm, I, I've heard that Disney is going to start doing their own streaming service. If not, Disney did uh, buy Hulu, so maybe they'll just put it on Hulu and mm-hmm. may, make that a thing. But I'm sure that those, those shows are so popular, especially oh, Daredevil. Dude, Daredevil's awesome. They can't just not have it. Yeah. Foggy Nelson. Foggy Matt Nelson, dude. <laughs> Matt Murdock. Foggy Nelson dude, is you, uh, uh, Fulton Reed from the Mighty Ducks, all grown up. That's pretty good, but like the main actor to me is kind of trashy. 
is Iron Fist. I didn't watch it. I loved it. Like it was great, but like the main dude, Danny Rand, like his the guy who plays Danny Rand is not the best actor to me. Yeah. Um, but everybody else, like the dude that plays Ward, uh, is like fucking amazing. Um and Colleen Wing, she's a badass. Um I don't know. It was really good. I See, liked all it. this nerd culture is coming out in, in you, Joe, and I didn't even know you uh, knew all this oh, stuff. Oh, yeah. I've watched all those. Here things. you are talking about Danny Rand and Colleen Wing. <laughs> yeah, Colleen Wing's a badass, dude. I love Colleen Wing. Big shout out to Colleen. Mm-hmm. See, I'm, Batman uh, is my favorite also, uh, as far as like your normal superhero that's actually had some properties done. Right. Um, but I will tell you, my favorite comic uh, run, one of my favorite uh, heroes is uh buddy baker who who's animal man and animal man's a pretty uh pretty cool superhero because uh especially when grant morrison took it over in the uh late 80s because basically animal man was just like this guy that popped up every once in a while he had Mm -hmm. like an issue here an issue there and he was like a d-rate player uh in like the justice league like some of the comics like he was like in justice league international you know, not right. he's not like a super Superman, Batman, gotcha. Martian Manhunter sure. type of uh, character. But Grant Morrison, a uh, very popular writer, took over it in the late '80s into the early '90s, and uh, basically just wrote a wrote a ca- comic book about this uh, family man. He used to be the Animal Man, and he's going to get back into it. Now he has a wife. He's got two kids, and uh, his his power is not that he can turn into any animal. It's that he can like mimic the powers of the animal, uh, an animal that's like somewhat near him for like thirty minutes. Hmm. So his power is super lame, and people are always disrespecting him. <laughs> like people like call for a superhero, and he shows up, and they're like, "No, we we meant like you know, real Superman." Superhero. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, but then, uh, guys, if you haven't read Grant Morrison's run on Animal Man, I can't stress it enough. Uh, then madness reigns, craziness ensues, and you start to. Uh, Man, you you feel very bad for Buddy Baker and all the stuff that he has to go through, and then his comic gets super super weird. Really? Yeah. And they revamped him uh, for when DC did what's called the New Fifty Two when they rebooted their universe. Uh, oh man, probably five six years ago, they did a run on Animal Man, which was pretty cool, and uh, that one's really cool too. But basically, now Animal Man, uh, instead of just like recalling powers of uh, you know, animals that are someone around him. He's now like this ambassador for the red, which is like all the living, this, all the living beings all together in like one organism and life force. And he can, he's connected to it. So he can literally take the, the form and the powers of all these different animals. Now it's uh, pretty awesome. That sounds pretty cool. He's the red swamp thing is the green. You probably mm. remember swamp thing. So swamp things like connected to all the plant life and, uh, animal man's like an ambassador of the red, all the, Interesting. Animal life. It's cool. Guys, if you haven't yet, check out... I mean, uh, it sounds cool. <laughs> check out Animal Man. And I think that would be a perfect character to have like kind of a Netflix series because <laughs> mostly he's a family man mm-hmm. that's a real shit superhero that gets put into um, situations that make him have to be better than who he is, mm-hmm. and he's not really good at being a superhero. Cool. And he's also being disrespected. So what a fun dynamic. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> you know? I love it. So, guys, check out Animal Man if you haven't. But yeah, oh, hey, what's your phone going off? Is that what's hot right now? It's ringing dude, off the hook. Hey, man, dude, it's probably all of our fans wanting to ask us questions about comic Probably. But dude, uh, yeah, also, too, we can't, we can't forget, because we talked about all the wrestlers that were there, but uh, there was actually a live pro wrestling event. There was. A cosplay wrestling league. Mm-hmm. And uh, for any of you wrestling fans out there, you guys might notice names like Kimberly, Blue pants from Blue the NXT. Pants, yeah. Um Ariel Monroe, who was just in the May Young Classic, Zeta Zhang, who was in the May Young Classic last year. Um, but when we went, it was just it was all the women right. um that that were wrestling. And uh it was pretty late into the day too. We made a day of it. Yeah. This was like started off like nine forty five, I think. Yeah, I think nine forty five is like when it kicked off nine thirty. And end like eleven but something. <laughs> you could have seen me and Joe in the front row. Oh, dude, yeah. We it were, was really entertaining because it was such like it was more personal than you know when you go see SmackDown or Raw or something like that. You're just one of you know t- t- twenty thousand people in the crowd watching. Yeah. But here, you know, you're one of two hundred, three hundred people watching, and 
your front row they're like talking to you they're really engaging with the crowd on a yeah. personal level <laughs> right yeah and they're threatening you people behind you are drinking tequila and smoking cigarettes yeah i don't know how that <laughs> happened but uh there was a very lively group of uh, of people behind us and at one point in the show it was just like man it smells very strongly of liquor specifically tequila, tequila. <laughs> and then you look on the somebody had spilled an entire like dixie cup of tequila yeah solo cup if you will of tequila on the floor uh, underneath the feet of some children and that were directly behind sure us. Sure enough, you know, 20 minutes goes by and there's a half-smoked cigarette. <laughs> yeah. on the so what's going on here? <laughs> People are drinking and somebody's, smoking. Somebody's tailgating the wrestling event. <laughs> <laughs> somebody's tailgating the wrestling event. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool, man. And there's nothing more satisfying than uh, when you're front row at a wrestling show and just somebody strikes someone with like... Oh, yeah. You can feel it. Yeah. It's not like on TV, man. You no. just feel like, oh, yeah, on TV, they're like throwing punches wildly or... Like when they come off the ropes and, and hit the mat, it's like... Yeah. It's you, loud. Velocity. Yeah. There's some impact there. There is. For and you sure. can tell that it's very painful. Yeah. Some of the shit looks like it actually would hurt. I'm sure that it does. Yeah. Even just getting slammed, like body slammed in the ring, it's not like the ring is like a giant mattress. Right. Yeah. You know, it's just yeah. wood. Yeah. I mean, it's got some, some give to it, but it's still would yeah i imagine would hurt i couldn't believe it so i uh you know um <clears throat> i watch wrestling and a few of the pay-per-views over the last like year or so there's like a spot like every once in a while where someone will like rip open the ring like rip the ring apart and so they'll, they'll basically cut the canvas and then they pull the canvas back and when it's just literally a piece of canvas that's stretched there's like a one inch foam mat and then it's just wooden planks hmm. on metal, like on metal <laughs> beams. And I was just like, man, this seems very uncomfortable. Uh, yeah, for sure. So what I'm saying is, Joe, is maybe I can powerbomb you sometime. Yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> I mean, I'd let you powerbomb me. I, I want to get in there, dude. Just I really want to get, get in there. I want to get in there. I want to jump off the ropes. I don't care if anybody's in there with me. I just want to jump off, kind of cannonball, and you know, land on my back. Just to see yeah. what it feels like to hit that thing. Yeah. Just lay it on my back. <laughs> then we'll call the ambulance. Right. And they'll <laughs> stretch me the, out. Knock the wind out of me, I'm sure. But I think I could take it, man. I've taken some slams in my day, you know? So I think I could jump off there and just kind of cannonball it. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe you'll be at Comic-Con next year uh, um, for your wrestling. Flying off the top ropes. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Maybe. What's your What's your wrestling name, Joe? Well, it was Joe Smoker, but... Yeah, now you quit smoking, bro. I haven't smoked in two weeks. Yeah, big shout out, day. dude. Two weeks two to the day. Weeks. And just to think, man, last week you were just a week in. Now you're two weeks in. Now I'm two weeks in. Yep. Still no cigarettes. Make, <laughs> still uh, so, no cigarettes. So Joe Smoker is... The only thing I smoked is wings, dude. Dude, yes. Um, I don't know, dude. Joe... Joe? <laughs> just Joe. Just Already Joe. taken. WWE. Early, um, early 2000s. But... Joe... Uh, We'll, we'll make it happen. We'll make it happen. But I couldn't believe it, man. That was that was awesome, and I really like that. You know, every Comic Con that I've been to, it's like kind of just like shuts down at eight, mm -hmm. and then there's some other stuff like uh, after party off site. Of course, I always went. I haven't went to the Super Con, and like I said, they did it up big because the festivities just kept on rolling. Yeah, they didn't stop till the wee hours in the morning. Yeah, so from nine thirty to eleven thirty, there was wrestling. Got to do a meet and greet. Got to meet the wrestlers. Mm -hmm. Got an autograph from Kimberly. Been a longtime fan, so uh, very excited about that. And uh, yeah, uh, and then as we were coming down the steps, we didn't we didn't get a chance to to see it all. And I think it might be a little weird, but they did have a full on burlesque show. They did, yeah. No. I'm not gonna say you know I don't want to talk talk any uh, trash about anything. I just don't. I'm just saying like it's like one of those things where it's like with Comic Con, there's a lot of different tastes, and some of them. I just don't know. Right. But there's going to be a burlesque show. Yeah. And, so uh, if you're into that kind of thing, come out next year. Come out next year. Disney princesses. That's the part that weirded me out. That is weird. But Marvel versus DC, I probably could get behind that. Right. Yeah. But the Disney princess one, I was like, oh, that's weird to What's strange soil the good that and image. I have a, a, you know, I got a three-year-old. I watch a lot of these Disney princesses yeah, that's true. on TV every day. Right, yeah. So I'm like, you know, I'm good, dude. I'll, I'll be all right. But, you know, if that's your thing, I don't give a fuck. Go do what you need to do. I'm but sure that there's probably for, there's probably a whole website dedicated uh, um, to that. Guarantee it. <laughs> but, Dis you know, disneygoddesses.com. Like, I'm not here to hate and talk shit. Like, I don't I don't give a fuck. Man, I will say we we totally embraced the day, embraced the culture. We did. So, yeah, I'm yeah. glad that you're uh you're now an official geek, man. Yeah. Official nerd. Official fucking nerd. So, I love it, dude. And again, big shout out to everybody that put on Supercon. I had just 
a fantastic time. It was great. I was trying to go the next day, too. I was like talking to my cousin. I was like, hey, man, you want to go to Comic-Con? He's like, no, dude. And I was like, all right, fine. I'm not going to. All right, fuck. I don't want to spend another $35. Yeah. I was only 30 on Sunday. I was only 30 on Sunday. So. $35 was a deal. Oh, yeah. For sure. And we got a lot of steps in. That we did. I, I think I broke 17000 Yeah. by the end of the day. Was a fuckload of steps for me. Yeah. And, and, well, I don't typically check my steps, <laughs> but I could imagine. That but on a day like that, nowhere near that many. <laughs> check your steps right now. I know you had your phone out. All right. Let me so check it. you had seventeen thousand on Saturday. Right. And then here we are. I got three thousand three hundred and eighty nine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you put in a full day's worth of work too. It's not like you, I was at work all day. Yeah. You were at work all day. Which I, you know, we're sitting down most of the day. You're but, sitting down most of the day, but you got to walk like to the cafeteria to the parking lot. Yeah. You know what a I mean? few blocks. Few, easy. Even to just uh, get into the place. Easy. So yeah. So basically, you just didn't really move around much. I'm only at three thousand twenty eight. <laughs> well, I got you beat. So you did. You do have me beat. But today's my off day. I didn't do anything. That's true. Just waited for my British nights. Maybe if I had my British nights <laughs> earlier, I would, uh, went out for a run. Went out for a fucking stroll in my BKs. <laughs> yeah, dude. dude, it's such a beautiful day out. <laughs> right. You're like, man, it's supposed to be beautiful on the weekend. Well, dude, and it, it was, was nice yesterday. Yeah, it was nice. It yesterday. was like 65 and sunny. I and didn't wear a jacket dude, yesterday. If only we did go on Sunday, which we didn't, but it would have been a great day to tailgate. That's true. So, it, had there been a parking lot, man, we 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 could have knocked it out of the park. Maybe next year they'll have it at the uh, fairgrounds. Hey, and man, and just, just camp fairgrounds out. are meant to be tailgated, <laughs> right, brother. Dude, these are fairgrounds, brother. <laughs> <laughs> so you tell the cops. <laughs> I'm going to wear a red, white, and blue wizard's uniform. Dude, yes. A wizard's uniform. Costume. I don't know. What, what are they called? What, I don't know. What do you think that was long? When I think of a wizard, I guess it's a cloak, cloak. but... I secretly always just think of uh, Merlin from the Sword in the Stone. Sure. That it's just basically like a V-neck dress. Yeah. <laughs> like a V-neck long sleeve dress. I, I just imagine, uh, for some reason, and I know that this isn't normal, but I always imagine them wearing like some sort of protective goggles and a big pointy hat cooking up something in a fucking laboratory. Yeah, the, goggles. The, I don't know, man. right? Like, but, but the pointy hat <laughs> but for the sure. Pointy hats for sure. But I just like for some reason I have this image in my head, and you specifically in a wizard costume and a big pointy hat with goggles on, whipping up some potions and putting them in beakers. <laughs> yeah, dude. In my watch, <laughs> that'd be funny. Though, I know we had talked about this one day, but that image is just stuck in my head. The only thing is, is I, I, now that you kept talking, you said pointy hat several times, and I was like. What if you had like an if you had an American flag wizard's uniform and a pointy hat? People would probably suspect you were in the clan and prob- you probably get <laughs> beat up. Yeah. So better go with the classic blue with stars, stars all over. Yeah. That's, that's what I would recommend. Yeah. Or I think Mickey's is Mickey's robe red with and he has the blue Mickey's hat and has the blue hat. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, maybe with I'll stars do that. and moons. Yeah. And shit. Yeah. All the lucky charms are represented on that hat. Yeah, dude. Yep. So that's gonna be us. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> But uh, so overall, like you know, what are your what are your impressions about Comic Con? Would you go back again? I would one hundred percent go back again. I would recommend it to anybody who has never been, even if it's something that you, you know, typically wouldn't even entertain. Yeah. But, um, it was a lot of fun, and it was really cool to see. And, it, and I did not see one person having a bad time. Like, no, everybody was having a good time. Yeah. Literally everybody. That's the uh, best part about that. those conventions like that, is everybody from all walks of life, in all different levels of cool right. coolness. Because, I mean, there are people there that, you know, have the most insane uh you know costumes and mm-hmm. then i mean there's just all level of of coolness and geekery it's on all and, uh, ends of the spectrum everybody like regardless of whether you want to admit it or not has an interest in something there that they have to yeah. offer whether it's you know comics wrestling geek goddesses you know what i mean <laughs> movies, like yeah. movies whatever like yeah, somebody th- and even if you're not into any of that just going and looking at the artwork alone is worth it yeah in my opinion and the cool part is is like i said everybody from all walks of life come together and uh, enjoying themselves mm-hmm. having a good time being accepting beer, of each other food, being beer. patient with each other mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying and i think the world could use a little bit more of that spirit i'll agree you know what I'm saying? I'll agree. Also, uh, the world could probably use a little bit more Halo 2 tournaments. Oh, dude. So why don't you go ahead and give put your classified ad out now. Right. You can put it out here on the, ad, uh, sure. the air if you yeah. want. I'm a Halo ringer. I mean, I played Halo 2, but Halo 3 was you know where I really shine. But, I mean, it's all pretty similar. So if you play Halo 2, hit me up. 
Yeah, dude. Hit up the Shomber's Wall podcast. Say, hey, I play Halo too. I play Halo on X. See, will they play it on OG Xbox? I think so. Yeah, because that makes it even cooler and more difficult. Because yeah. you can play Halo Two right now on a 360 or Xbox One, whatever Master Chief Collection, and it's just it's not as hard. Because Halo yeah. Two is a fucking hard game, and I think half the battle is that controller. <laughs> yeah, and the big point is, guys, is there are Halo Two tournaments going on, and Joe really want to get in on it, but you have to have a four man team. Yeah. So, oh well, next nope. year I got the 364 days to figure it out. Yeah, man. So make it happen. Right. You should have a LAN party, man. Dude, we should. Do you have an Xbox? Uh, I don't, but my good friend Critty, shout out to Critty uh, this week, uh, has several Xboxes uh, and several televisions, and they're all hooked together to have LAN parties still. I'm sure he has several copies of Halo 2 as well. Yes, he does. So, dude, that'd be badass. So, let's make it happen, guys. I'd be into that. But yeah, uh, guys, if you haven't uh, yet, if you haven't been to one yet, definitely go to a convention. I would definitely recommend Louisville Supercon. Uh, like I said, I had a great time. Um, and yeah, just a bunch of awesome people coming together over their passions, having a good time. You know, thousands of people getting along. Getting along. Imagine that. Can you imagine it, dude? Everyone getting along. So you'll see me next year. I'll be stomping around in my British Knights. Yep. And, wizard uh, uniforms. <laughs> You might catch his tailgating. I'm going to grow my beard down to my knees <laughs> and dye it white. <laughs> that would be so fucking awesome. Go full Merlin. That would be so badass. In 2019. Please do that. And also, too, uh, next year, listeners, Joe and I, like I said, we, we've made a plan mm-hmm. uh, to be there. And uh, we're going to we're gonna take this podcast and we're going to take uh, our ideas and all this other stuff that we've been working on, collaborating on music, all that good sort of thing. And we're going to put it, I think, into some sort of amalgamation. Yeah. Um, on the internet, some visual or medium, some 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 place where you can some place where you can look at it or right. like listen you see to it. it with your eyes and hear it at the same time, yeah, with your ears <laughs> at the same time. Weird, dude. <laughs> and uh, I've never seen nothing like it. And hopefully you'll like it enough, and you'll you'll just keep watching it, and then we'll get so many watches that we're gonna mm. sign autographs. All right, yeah. And this, it's a foolproof plan. And we've is. got it all planned out. We do. We've got a plan. We do. We got like. We got it planned out. I'm excited. It's ironclad. Yeah. I, I keep wanting to say stuff, but I'm like, man, and you're doing this thing where like you don't want to give away details, and I don't want to give away any details, so I'm just going to keep my mouth shut. But I just want to let you know, guys, there is a, a project in the works, and uh, we're buying equipment. So we've taken there the next go. step. It w- we're going from talking about it... To buying shit. To buying shit. Yeah. So that's where we're at in the, in the project. Yeah. So good thing I have a spare room in the Smithsonian because... We have a full chat room full of just the most <laughs> random shit you could ever imagine. And that has now led to the point of getting on the internet and purchasing things. Yeah. So that's all we can say. That's all we can say. But if you want to join Cult of the Komodo in 2019... Go ahead and shoot us a message. Shoot us a message. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that's all we have to say about that, dude, because we're total nerds now. Right. And well, There uh, are some stipulations, and you may be considered, but you may you may not. Yeah. We might be uh, reaching out to you if you want to star in... Um, a movie. In something. Yeah. We'll see. But <laughs> or yeah. a Broadway play. <laughs> a <We> Broadway <laughs> play. You know, who knows? It's, it's out there. Um, but yeah. So we're buying stuff. So needless to say, you'll get our autograph next year. Right. See you at Supercon. Yeah, exactly. See you at Supercon, guys. And if you like what you heard today, and something tells me you did, because you actually made it all the way to, into the podcast. And I'm proud of us, man. We didn't go off on too many tangents. We didn't get too, we didn't get too hot off the rails there. Yeah, that's true. Hopefully we, we talked enough about the convention. I think we did. Yeah, we had a great time. I did. Big shout out to those geek goddesses. Yeah. Holy Lord. Holy shit. I, <laughs> I, I kind of downplayed my interest, but right, I was like, yeah. I was totally like, man, I just want to check out these goddesses. Yeah, dude. And I mean, if you guys are interested, um, there's it's a subscription of some kind, I think, right? Yeah. So I guess. Yeah. Check it out online. Geek goddesses. <laughs> Google it. Google it. Uh, but yeah. Uh, Make sure your mom's not watching. <laughs> But yeah, uh, guys, um, if you like what you heard today, definitely um, subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already. It's on iTunes, it's on Stitcher, it's on Spotify, it's wherever you get uh, podcasts. Um, So make sure you subscribe, make sure you listen, tell your friends, tell all your fellow nerds uh, out there, tell everyone. Tell them all. And like I said, tell this, them all. We're, we're putting Louisville <laughs> on the map, dude. I looked at the map the other day. I don't think Louisville's even on there. It's not. And Sean versus Wild is going to put it on the map. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Next year, we'll have Super Ultra Con. All right. Yeah. Uh, we'll, well see. You know when you look at like Google Maps, though, and like you have to zoom in real far on it before you see the word Louisville pop up? Mm, yeah. You no longer have to zoom as far. Yeah. So. Louisville will be in bold print. Right. It'll be twice. It'll be like just as big as like Los Angeles. 
Tokyo and New York on a map. Beijing. Yes. New Delhi. New Delhi on a map. <laughs> the two most populated cities in the world, guys. The two most populated capitals. Capitals, cities, by population. By population. Yes. Uh, so uh, New Delhi and Beijing. Fun fact for yeah, you guys. There you go. There you guys know. And also, Joe and I, um, since we last spoke, I got a... You know, before we ride off in the sunset, let everyone know uh, we did win we did. at trivia last week. We did. So we after coming in second, we came in first. We were fu- we were determined to not get second place. Yeah, and it worked. Yeah. So so far we're two for two as far as placing in the top three. Right, and I think that trend will continue until we rack up at least a one thousand dollar bar tab at yep. Hoopsters. Exactly. Right. Because we're gonna need we're gonna need wings and yeah. we're going to be able to buy the place I right think. so <laughs> we'll basically just become part owner so, so whatever <laughs> we're, maybe they'll uh give us some you stock get options in this place uh, just trivia it's yeah dude we're, we're gonna be so <laughs> stock good at, options they're gonna give us stock <laughs> options instead they're like okay yeah you, uh, you could take the bar tab or we're gonna offer you stock options right, yeah. <laughs> so but yeah guys so thank i'll you. take the bar tab <laughs> i'll take the tab please <laughs> uh but yeah thank you guys so much for tuning in uh again this week joe i've been so stoked about having you on the show. So thank you for coming on. <laughs> Loved it. Again today. Mm-hmm. As a longtime producer, I'm glad, uh, of the longtime producer of this podcast, I'm glad that you're uh, behind the mic now too. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, dude. So, and if you ain't got nobody next week or the week after, you know, I'll hey, come back. But you know what? Even if I do have somebody, I think we could all use a cup of Joe uh-huh. along with our guests. Yeah. So it is what it is, guys. You'll jo- be seeing more of me regardless of whether I'm on the podcast or not. Yep, that's true. So Joe, uh, if you Listeners, if you uh, want to support Joe, of course, subscribe to this podcast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Easiest way. Yep. Check out his band, Fox Bat. Oh. And uh, they're doing big things. Big and, shit. Um, yeah, man. Just keep keep it rolling, man. Keep it rolling. Keep it rocking. Yep. Absolutely, guys. Well, thank you so much. Again, I just need to wrap this up. Why do I keep saying thank you? Whatever. You know what time it is. I don't know what else to say. Whatever. This has been... The Sean vs. Wild Podcast. Thank you for listening, DNN.